This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Biomutant guide. Today we're going to talk about the old world vaults and how to get some of the strongest weapons in the game. Let's get to it. So there's a few things we need to cover before we get into this. First off, I'm going to show you where the quest guy is that's going to point you to all of these old world vaults, but you don't necessarily have to go to him. I've already done some of them before I even got to him. The things just spawned in and they were there. So I don't know if they spawn in based on your level or what, but the one that I'm going to show you, the first one that he sends you to is up here in suburbia. I went there without going to him first could not get it to spawn. I've read some stuff where some people said they went there, it was there. Other people said they went there and it was like the same situation I had, it was not there. So the easiest thing to do is just go to this guy first. You can go to him super easy. You don't need anything special. I'm, he's in the dead zone, but I'm gonna show you how to deal with all of that without having to have any special suit or anything like that. Go to him, he's gonna point you to all of them, and then you just go through the quest net line and just go do them all that way. Super easy, you don't have to hunt them down. Make sure they trigger all of that good stuff. So the guy that we want is, he's right, he's right here. Now. To get to him, it's relatively easy. You're gonna need to get to Blubber Mud first, and you can get to that super simple. You come over here, I'm gonna zoom all the way out so you can see the whole map here. You go to Gizmo's location here, and then you just follow the edge of the mountain, come over here, you can get to Blubber Mud. Blubber Mud is completely safe. It does not get into the toxic part until you get over to here where you start losing breath. So I'm over here at the quick travel location right here in Blubber Mud. Once you are over here, all you have to do is find the mountain and then you're just gonna run along the side of the mountain. And as I stated, I'm gonna show you how to do this naked. So we're going in here naked. And you're fine all the way until you get to all the way around here, as long as you stay on the side of the mountain, you will be fine even when you jump down to here. Now, when you get to this rock right here, you're gonna stop and you're gonna save your game just in case things go terribly for you. Okay, so your game is saved just in case anything goes bad. Now what you're gonna do is just stick to the edge of the mountain here, run all the way over to here. And now you can see right about there, we cross the hypoxia zone. Once you're ready, you're just gonna stick to the edge here and you're gonna run. Make sure you sprint all the way around, jump down here, and you're just gonna stick to the side of the mountain and a cutscene will kick in. That over there is steep -o -deep Don't worry, you're not gonna lose your breath when the cutscene kicks in. It pauses your breath. As soon as it comes back around, you're gonna take off running again and you're gonna run for this right here and you're gonna jump until you get to the rope. Get to the rope as quick as possible. Once you attach to the rope, you will gain all of your breath back and you're fine. So you can see it's completely doable. It's a little sketchy, but it is doable. Now, if you have a little bit of resistance, I actually have a lot of resistance with this setup. I'm at 96%. It becomes infinitely easier to run through this zone and to do this. So you can see here with 96%, we're just slowly losing it. We don't have to rush too much and we can just run over here relatively easy and easily and worry free come up here and then the same thing once we're on here it goes away and then once you're up here you don't have to worry about it this is a safe zone so to make this easier on yourself before you do this run just take a look at your gear and put together all the gear that you have that has any type of hypoxia resistance on it it's going to make the run a heck of a lot easier for you so then what you're going to do, mark your location here. Now that you've done that, you can easily travel back here without having to worry about any hypoxia situations. So then you're just going to talk to this guy. So now that you have spoken to Moog, he should have given you the quest. If we come over here, you can see we have the quest right here. And if you take a look, you can see where that is in relation to the tree. You just want to go to the tree and then come down a little bit. So I'm going to go to my closest uh, fast travel point. Once you get to the location, it will trigger a little movie thing there, a little clip, and the monster will spawn. Now, I find it easy to just do this on the back of your mount. So you can just get on the back of your mount, run circles around this guy, and just keep sprinting and shooting him. 
up to you however you want to go about fighting him. I have two really strong guns right now, so it's super easy for me. I'm pretty far on, but you can uh, just get on the back of your mount and, well, get knocked around a little bit too, apparently. But yeah, it's not, it's not too bad of a fight if you just run in circles and just shoot him. So once he's down, you're going to get some poop. And you will also get the vault key. The vault key is what you're after because the vault key is what's going to let you get inside the vault. And that is where the good stuff is. So then you're just going to follow the location to the vault, which you can see now it's telling me I need to return to Moog. But if you look on your map, it shows you where the vault is and you can just put a marker there or track that one specifically and then just go to that location so the vault for this guy is right over here and once you get down here just look at the card reader that's going to open the vault doors and this is the thing with the weapons so all of the really op weapons will be in one of these cases and for this first one we get the sparkatron hipixic or what crump whatever whatever that is it's crazy strong this gun is insanely strong then there's also a bunch of other loot in here as well you can see there's three along here and there is three along here so you just want to go through and loot all of that as well so note that these weapons do have requirements so this one here is another one that i got earlier this thing is crazy strong look at this damage it's insane but you can see here i need to be level 20 in order to use it if we come over here to the ranged weapons, this is the one that we just picked up and we hit F to take a look at it. Now it's not showing the requirements here because I already have them all, but you need to be level 18 to use it and you need at least 50 agility. If you have both of those, you should be able to use it with no problem. Also, you can modify these weapons and take them apart. So the main part that has all of the stats on it that you want, which is this momentum right here, is the main part right here the base base type part all of this other stuff can be swapped out without affecting that now i was trying to get the rate of fire to go up on this thing because it's a relatively slow rate of fire out of all the things that i have nothing was increasing that i seem to only be able to increase the arbor pierce and the range and accuracy after you've done that you've got this weapon you want to go to the next one you just got to go back to moog continue this quest line and he will guide you through getting some of the most OP weapons in the game. After you kill the first monster and you return to Moog, he will send you to the next one. After you kill that one and you come back to him again, he will initiate a dialogue that will ask you to offer him a spot on the ship. I did this and after that, I was able to access the armor behind him. Now, I don't know if you have to offer him a spot on the ship in order to get said armor, but I did. So you can save right before you return to him after killing the second one and test for yourself to see what happens if you offer it, if you don't offer it. He turned down the seat and still gave me the armor. So you may be able to decline the offer and still get the armor. And here are the locations of the other two vaults that I completed before I even knew about Moog in the first place. So if for some reason the quest line never sends you to these two, you know where they are and you can just go there like I did and they should just spawn for you. Hopefully you found this guide helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Biomutant content and I don't just cover Biomutant, I cover all kinds of different so you never know when I'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to give an absolutely massive shout out to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my late crow Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.